Hey Vinyl community and welcome to my new channel Jürgen um, Six Beers Nine Wives and let me tell you one thing it's not easy if you have only six beers but nine wives uh, it's a Thursday evening so see what I did there it's a Thursday I'm gonna have a dark wheat beer Let's do a little collection update. I haven't done one in quite a while. So, over the last couple of weeks and months, I bought a couple of um, uh, vinyl records and a couple of CDs. Let's start with this one. A little bit of a death uh, thrash metal. This is uh, The Fine Art of Murder by Malevolent Creation. They recently released uh, that on vinyl. I had the CD of that which, um, since it came out. This is one of my favorite um, Malevolent Creation albums. This one is from uh, 1998. This marks uh, the return of uh, singer Brett Hoffman. Um, and it has Dave Kalros on drums and Dave Kalros is one of my favorite uh, death metal drummers of all time. So this is a re-release on Back on Black. It has uh, the lyrics and nothing else. Uh, a record that is about 45 minutes spread over four sides. But what can you do? No inners on that one, pretty pretty simple. This one came on uh, red, transparent red vinyl. This is uh, the centering on one side. And the song titles on the other, so custom centerings, at least they did that. And from what I know, there is no black version. It says colored vinyl, a limited edition, Color may vary. So maybe there are a couple of uh, different colors. I don't know, mine was red when it came, so I have to live with that, but it sounds great. Staying with Malevol Malevolent Creation, another one of my favorites uh, of them, apart from, from the first two uh, Ten Commandments and Retribution, of course. But they've got a huge, huge catalog and the first two, The Fine Art of Murder and The Will to Kill. These are my favorite four malevolent albums. Oh, maybe Eternal. Maybe Eternal is a little bit better than that even. So, a little bit of uh, the same here. This album is under 40 minutes from what I can remember from the CD. So it's a single LP, nothing inside. Also a back on black reissue. They had two different covers for that one, but a back on black decided to go with uh, this. And it uh, also has um, the same sticker, color may vary. <coughs> color may vary. Mine came with uh, no color at all. So uh, there must have been something wrong. <sighs> I'm a little bit jokey today, huh? <coughs> <coughs> at least one German with a little bit of humor. So cheers to that. <laughs> Next up, a little bit of epic metal for you. A brand new release by a Swiss band called Megaton Sword. The album is Might and Power. This one came out just a couple of weeks, maybe a month ago. This is uh, their second full-length album. They had a full-length and an EP before that, which I quite liked, but that one is a huge, huge improvement. 
also not too long. One LP. It came out on Dying Victims production. Uh, this is uh, the Megaton Sword. And here is uh, the cover artwork in its full beauty. Dying Victims always does a great job. So music wise, this is a little bit uh, more epic but also more rocking than their older stuff. So uh, if you like uh, a cross between Manowar, Manila Road and a little bit of power metal, this one's for you. So if you know the old ones and you were a little bit on the fence, do check out this one. I think there's a download code in there that I will give away in a minute. A couple of people criticized uh, the singer for the EP and the uh, full length album, but he did a huge, huge step forward, so check it out. As usual with uh, the Dying Victims records, they include a lot of flyers with other releases, more flyers. This one has no lyric sheet, but it's got that little, I don't know what it is, A5, at least here in Germany, it's A5, with uh, the lyrics in it, a little bit of artwork, and there you go. He's a strong guy because he lifts a burning Megaton sword. More lyrics. And uh, more band photos. So <laughs> all of these guys must be pretty strong because everyone had the opportunity to lift uh, the Megaton sword. So that is uh, a little bit different but very nice has a sticker of uh, the album cover and it's got a postcard nice like I said dying victims production always does a great job and it has of course a might and power band picture poster so if you are interested check this out can you read that okay enough first come first serve has a hype sticker and it says second album by the Swiss epic metal quintet even more varied and heavy than before. That's right what I told you without reading the hype sticker. On that one I decided to get uh, the black vinyl. So now you have the download, check it out and decide for yourself if you like it or not. Or not. Next up, uh, more death metal. Um, I think everybody has shown this because um, almost nobody has uh, the original nuclear blast, nuclear blast version or the original relapse, I think it was in the US, of Suffocation's first EP, Human Waste. That was supposed to be a demo tape but somehow they got a record deal and uh, released it as a... What was it? Five, five or six, six song EP? Six songs, yeah. This was uh, the first one that I heard when it came out in 1990. And it's uh, still my favorite uh, Suffocation recording. This reissue came out on Relapse, um, has two bonus tracks from another demo from 1990. Come 
comes with the lyrics. Band picture and some credits. This is awesome. That is another one I bought because um, it was um, ranked or rated with one out of ten or two out of ten points and I it says unlistenable death metal in 1990 so I bought the original CD. I never owned uh, the vinyl so now I do. Although Suffocation is a CD band for me but I had to get that on, on I almost said black wax uh, of course there's no black wax available, so I had to go with this uh, splatter stuff. Yeah, it's okay, I've got it on vinyl now and I'm uh, pretty satisfied with it. So, I think a lot of people have shown that one. Speaking of suffocation, um, I found a CD that I haven't heard because I avoided it uh, 10 years ago. The album a Pinnacle of Bedlam by Suffocation. I found that one very, very cheap. And as I'm a little bit on a suffocation kick, I bought it and I quite like it. It's a different beast than uh, early suffocation. Um, it's more cleaned up. It's a little bit faster. It's a little bit slower. It's a little bit more down breaky, break, break downy, <laughs> whatever you call that. But it has uh, this guy on drums. Malevolent Creation, remember? Dave Kalros. He already played on the um, uh, Despise the Sun EP that came out in the late 90s. So, Nuclear Blast release from 2013. I had that one on <coughs> in the car today. Again. I like it. I really, really like it. It's like um, it's way more precise than the old stuff. This one cuts like um, a scalpel. But as old school as I am, I like this one. But I prefer the rusty knife over the scalpel. Yeah. Rusty knife <coughs> for me. Um, last one, or maybe not, at least last uh, vinyl, that's what's playing in the background. In 2021, a German, excuse me, uh, that's the wheat beer, <laughs> um, Doom Metalers, Epic Doom Metalers Wheel released the album Preserved in Time on the Cruz del Sol Records. I did not get it when it came out, but I ordered the Megaton Sword and I saw that one for not too much money on the Dying Victim site and I decided to finally get it. And it surprised me, trust me. This is a great fucking doom metal album. It's epic doom, a lot like Solitude Eternals. Singer Arcadius here reminds me a lot of, um, what's his name, Robert Lowe. Listen, listen to that. It's sometimes a little bit more rocking than Solitude Eternus, but uh, quite in that style. And I like the cover. This is a matte finish. This is some kind of, I don't know, 
flatter vinyl, but uh, the record is playing right now. Like I said, the band formed in 2006, and from what I know, this is uh, their first official um, release. Look at them. These guys are a little bit older. So they know their craft. And if you liked what you heard, again, here is a download code. I'm holding it up a little bit longer because this uh, shitty thing won't focus, so at least you get the chance to read it. Very, very much recommended if you like old, melodic, epic, doom fucking metal. So, uh, I've got a little bit time, a little bit of time. I just got in the new Enslaved album. So uh, this is the last one. It's called Heimdall. And like always on uh, Thursdays, uh, Thursdays, cheers. I have quite a distance to drive. So I listen to the Suffocation album and two times to, to that one. This is an awesome record, trust me. If you like a little bit of black metal, not, not very much, just a little bit, and you like progressive music in general, this is great. Some influences of uh, 70s prog rock, some uh, old uh, German uh, 70s prog influences, usually uh, they call it Krautrock. It's epic, it's melodic, it's very well crafted. Um, only six, seven songs on here and every song is a winner on that one. I like I think I've never talked about uh, Enslaved on, on one of my videos, but I love the band. Especially their, their newer stuff that is a little bit more proggy. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing, nothing against uh, the old black metal days. But this new stuff, it's just amazing. Listening to that one in the car, it made me... When they come on tour, I'm really thinking about going to see them again because they are a great live band as well. So if you haven't heard it, do check out Enslaved's new album called Heimdall. So that's it. Um, Only a quarter of the beer has gone down my throat, so I've got um, more than five left. So uh, five, <laughs> five and a half beers, uh, still nine wives. <laughs> Have a nice weekend and see you soon. Good night. <laughs>